Now, what is the general theorem that we proved at the end? If you have a polynomial on f of n, then it's a d-dimensional subspace provided both the leading coefficient and the last coefficient are non-zero. Now, when we, when we were talking on Tuesday, I didn't put that last condition up there. I should have. I was implying it, but I didn't state it explicitly, and, and today I, I, I want to underscore that. The reason that you want a sub d to be non-zero is I don't want the complex number zero to be a root of the polynomial. And when, when the last coefficient, that a sub d, is not 0, then if you substitute in 0 into the polynomial, all you get is a sub d, and that wouldn't be 0. All right, so the, the general theorem is that the solution space of that is a d-dimensional subspace of our infinite dimensional vector space v, and furthermore, you can find a basis by taking a bunch of little functions of the form a power of n times the root to the nth power, where r is a root of the associated polynomial, and the value of the n to the i is at most m minus 1. It's somewhere between 0 and m minus 1. All right, so that's the statement of the theorem. Now, you're already beginning to glaze over, and we're only five minutes into the class. So let's take a concrete example. And this is the same example that I put up last time, but with, I've got one more factor to it. So everybody here, if you don't understand the significance of that general theorem, this slide should make complete sense to you. If you have an advancement operator equation, which has been factored over the complex number system, so you'll notice those roots, some of them are real, some of them are complex. So the reals are inside the complex number. So a real root is a complex root. So I factored this, and so the conclusion from this theorem is that the general solution to that advancement operator equation is a linear combination of these basis vectors. And the degree of that polynomial is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 5 is 14. So it's a 14-dimensional vector space. And what are the basis vectors? 3 to the n, n 3 to the n, n squared 3 to the n, n cubed 3 to the n. Why that? Because a minus 3 is a root, I mean, as a factor, so 3 is a root of multiplicity 4. Does that, you see that in the expression? Okay. On the second line, a minus 7 plus 2i is a factor, so 7 minus 2i is a root. And so there are three terms in the basis for that root, because it's a root of multiplicity 3. And there's 7 minus 2i, n times 7 minus 2i to the n, and n squared. All right. Same uh, thinking for the next one, minus 5 plus 8i. Now, look at the last one. I added this term to emphasize the role uh, when 1 is a root. Now, 1 has this wonderful property that 1 to the nth power is 1. So that the bottom line, if you wanted to make it look like the other lines, you would simply add a, an expression, 1 to the n, to every term. But mathematicians are selectively lazy, and so I don't want to write 1 to the n when I know that it's just 1, and 1 times something is whatever it is. So that last line just becomes a polynomial in n, and a polynomial of what degree? polynomial of degree 4 because 1 is a root of multiplicity 5. Okay, so the takeaway. If I give you a quiz and I write some kind of polynomial in the operator, in the advancement operator on a function f of n, I could ask you, 
write the general solution. You should write a slide, uh, an answer like this bottom one. It's just it's mechanical. I could ask you to write the basis, just list the functions. Now you drop the constants and just list the functions, the 14 functions. I could ask you, I could give you a function and ask you, is it a solution? And I, you know, I could make up something where I've invented my own constants. And you're supposed to recognize, oh, well, it's, in that, it's either in that form or it's not. So you should be able to answer these kinds of questions very, very quickly using just the understanding of the implications of the theorem. So I want everybody, whether you care about that general theorem or not, you've got to understand this slide. 